in 10 minutes, a great nurse knows more about you than your family does. Hmm. And I think about it, and that's personalization, right? Nurses meet us where we are, right? They know the science, but they have to know the art of knowing us as people. And they practice by scientific evidence and standards and all that good stuff, but they have to create this intimate relationship at warp speed. You know, that is personalization. That is the nursing I know. If this is what we're solving for though, I think we'd all also agree, and we've heard that throughout the day, that our, our current system isn't built to do this reliably and effectively. The system acts, still acts like we're solving for efficiency and profit margins, not for meeting patient needs. And not always for supporting the well-being of caregivers, which of course is especially vital right now. Business can't be the leading motive. People, individuals must be. I can talk a lot about this. You know, I think of all the hospitals, you know, who are still studying Lean Six Sigma to take slack out of the system. And I continue, continue to wonder like, why? Why are we looking to manufacturing for guidance on this? GE and Toyota are great companies. They do good things, but they make equipment and cars. They don't deliver healthcare. I think that the same, you know, omni-channel strategies that are in retail and that supply chain is dealing with are very much connected to the same strategies that healthcare and education are facing. And certainly COVID has, I think, if anything, expedited the importance of that conversation. But, but what it really says is, you know, omni-channel retail is essentially like I would call it like the definition of the individual, you know, defining the business, right? And those who will win in, as, as we move forward. So much like the role of a store, you know, in retail through Omnichannel has changed, there's a comparison here to the role of hospitals and, and of doctor's offices and labs and college campuses and classrooms that, that have to be re-envisioned as well. You know, maybe the way I leave it this way is, you know, with, um, without evolving, you know, the family physician's office or college campus, you know, it may quickly become essentially those industries version of a shopping mall. You know, is that where we really want to be? I think because of evidence-based practice, what clinicians have learned through the decades and centuries is that using evidence-based practices, we believed was a one size fits all. If you treat everybody the exact same, then you're going to have good outcomes. What we now know is that cultural differences, social determinants of health, environmental factors, a variety of inputs really require that care be more personalized. So that healthcare is a little bit different in that regard. The, the stakes are really, really high if we don't get it right. So it requires people who have courage. And my definition of courage is to, uh, it's not the absence of fear, but it's the ability to get push through that fear. And a lot of times you have to do that with imperfect or incomplete information. 